Jet fans, some, uh, we've got a couple calls here that were A-OK with the Jets winning yesterday afternoon. I don't get that. I, I don't really understand don't. it. That does not make much sense to How? me. Uh, I, I don't I don't know. I, I, I th- I, I think it's a game that, uh, and it's a team that you're rooting, dreaming of Trevor Lawrence. Maggie, think about social media. We discussed it a little bit earlier on. On Saturday afternoon, watching the ACC championship game, you know, and, and I follow a lot of Jet fans, and, and people were I know. clamoring they could taste it. about they could Trevor taste Lawrence. It. Yep. Oh, my God, look at him. I think Evan sent out a tweet, I'm an hour away from watching my quarterback play in the ACC championship game. Something like that paraphrased it, but... Yeah, Jet fans were rejoicing watching Lawrence do what he did to Notre Dame and dreaming about what he would look like in a Jet uniform. And then they go beat the Rams and mess it all up. I think Craig had a great tweet. The Giants save Thanksgiving and the Jets ruin Christmas. <laughs> like, is the Jets facility built on like an Indian burial ground? I mean, geez, at one point, I mean, you just thought, okay, 10 years not making the playoffs. All of the miscues, the bad head coaching hires, like all of the embarrassment of from the very big to the little to Jamal Adams wanting out of town to uh, your Walter Payton man of the year now plays for the Ravens. I mean, just so many different things from from consequential to inconsequential that have just made you shake your head at what's going on with the Jets. And you thought all that's going to change. It's going to yeah. change or at least we're going to give ourselves the best opportunity for it to change by making sure that there is actually a pot of gold at the end of this rainbow, that all this losing is going to be worth it. Yes, you're going to have to sit through the indignity of losing. Yes, you're going to be on graphics from now till eternity, winless seasons, winless teams, you and the Lions and the Browns. But you know what? No one cares about the Lions and the Browns and their winless seasons because if you actually do get successful off of that futility, then nobody cares. Nobody cares. And for the Jet fan who actually is happy that the team won yesterday, you understand how this all works, right? (laughs) You get what, how impactful that could have been. Now, listen, you don't know if Trevor Lawrence is going to be the next John Elway. It is a crapshoot. There's a thousand ways that the Jets can skin this cat now, right? There's a million different ways they can either get to their next quarterback or Darnold or whatever they can do. The problem is, is that you want to give it a shot with the guy who's going to be the generational talent, right? Like I'd and rather Maggie... roll the dice with the with the Andrew Luck clone than now have to figure out what am I doing with if it's the second overall pick? Is it Fields? Is it going to be this kid Wilson from BYU? Is it going to be trading back? Is it going to be now everything's on the table when before it was snap your fingers, let's get a coach in here who can who can write this thing. We'll have a quarterback that will be ex- we will be excited about because that's another thing too moose well, Maggie, that's why i kind of feel you, bad you for wanna, the jeff if you're fan. gonna stink you want to also stink in the right year or have a purpose for stinking and, uh, and, th- th- and so you go through all this and you were saying oh my god at the end we're getting the guy that nfl teams have been talking about for three years with trevor lawrence we're gonna get that guy He's now going to be putting on the uniform each and every week, the difference maker, game changer, franchise player. So, yeah, you there are teams that have won one game, two games, winless, whatever it might be, end up with the number one overall pick. But you also want to be that bad in the right year when that generational player is there and is available And the Jets were at the cusp of it and let that slip through their fingers with a win yesterday in L.A. Right. It's like you don't want to be there when, you know, you're – I remember the draft where, like, the Bills reached for E.J. Manuel. the same draft where where the Jets went for Geno. It's like, yeah, you don't want to stink in those years, right, where – Tim Couch. Yeah, right, exactly. This was an option. And you know what? There still could be more options. But you have to, instead of comparing now, if you're going to draft a quarterback, comparing them to Lawrence – is not going to make you feel great. Compare them to Darnold. Do you think this next quarterback coming out of college, whether it's Fields or Wilson or whatever, could be better than Darnold? And a couple things. The one thing I feel mostly, like, I feel bad for the Jet fan for a lot of reasons today, but first of all, they have no, like, they can't control this. And the worst part is, like, the players are not going to tank. The system that is in place at the Jets has always been a problem, where the general manager and the coach both directly um, go to the owner and have like equal say. You really need a better chain of command there because think about it. If this really was an organizational tank, again, you're not going to make Frank Gore not run for six yards or catch a pass. What you have to do is the general manager has to be making decisions on who is playing that day. No doubt. If you leave it to Gase, 
Of course Gase wants to win. He basically gave you the middle finger on his way out of town, you know, if he could. This is has to be an organizational decision when you've come this far down the road. So that means you have to bench guys. Listen, if we want a master class on this, it could be Belichick in Week 17 if he needs to, right? If we think that Belichick will be diabolical and if the Jags beat the Bears somehow and that you need another law, another win from the Jets, do you think Belichick is going to be starting anybody? Most likely yeah. not. So that's the that's another thing that just comes back to bite the Jets organization where if Joe Douglas really wanted, if it's best for the team to lose these last three games, you have to be the one who's making the decision about who's playing in that game because whoever's on the field is going to play hard. Yeah, they, they well, they are. You're right. And we had Lombardi on a couple months ago, and Mike referenced the only team that was a, a abundantly obvious that they were tanking was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Winston draft when in the second half they rested all their stars. Right. So, you have to make sure the guys who are on the field are not good enough. Well, that's it. That's the that's the other way to look at it. And yes, you had guys that Gore's not part of this future. Gase is not part of this future. You had those guys making plays yesterday and, and Gase calling a game and that team playing their rear end off and beating a Ram team, Maggie, that clearly thought it was going to be a bye week against the Jets. I mean, that McVay and that coaching staff did not have the year of that team uh, I heard I heard Aaron Donald uh, last week give you the quote, uh, you know, the oh, the Jets are better than what they are. They're going to be a tough match. Well, the Jets played their rear end off, so you give those players a lot of credit. Definitely. And the Rams went into that game expecting to have a layup of a game, and all of a sudden they realized halfway through it or maybe 20 minutes into the game that they were going to have something on their hands here, and the Jets finished off that win. You're always waiting for the Rams to wake up. Okay, when are the Rams going to wake up? When is it going to take control of this game? And it – it never happened. And when the Jets needed to make plays to seal that victory, there was Marcus May making a play on fourth down. 